Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I got a video I'm gonna start in a series I'm doing on CNC parts. I'm gonna do several videos on these. The first one I'm doing is gonna be these here. These are from Chaotic Labs. Boom! These are the Z-Tensioners. I'm gonna put them in a Voron 2.4 350. The, all the ones I have in these are all 3D printed parts. I'm gonna show you the differences in them, how to upgrade it the easiest way, the easiest method, and I'm gonna show you how they work and all that stuff. So. Let's uh, open them up and get right into it. Okay, so we've got our Z-Tensioners here. We're gonna open them up and see what's got included in the box and show you guys how these work. They always do a great job of the packaging and making sure everything's secure here. They can always come with a couple stickers, which is nice with the logo. You wanna pull one of these out. You got a nice little logo on it right there. This is Chaotic Lab. One of the great things about these I like is the thumb tensioner. You can just loosen or Tighten this here and it's going to move the tensioner in and out to add tension to your belt. The one thing I'll mention, as you can see, it does not include any bearings or anything in here, no pulleys. So you're going to be using the bearings off of your 2.4, off the Z, and you're going to put them here. But when you do that, this is actually including as well all the spacers here that you'll need. Because if you have a 13 millimeter or a 14 millimeter pulley, which will measure that, and I'll show you how to do that will be the determining factor if you're gonna to need to put these spacers in here or not. So I'll show you how that works. And also right now, these are on sale for $49.98, so it'd be a good time to get them. They're typically like $58.32, I believe. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put the link in the description for this. We'll set this aside, I'm gonna put the machine up here and I'll show you guys how to remove the old ones off and get these installed. All right, so we got the printer up here. I wanna show you how to put these on, but before we do this, I wanna show you something that I use Somehow you're gonna to have to tie your gantry up. You can use zip ties for this. So we're gonna put two over here and two over here. So we're gonna to need to take the bolts out of these. There's two in each one. Here, here, and there, and there. So before I do that though, if I start doing this and loosening this off, it's, everything's just gonna fall. So what I do is I use these locks and I'll put the link in the description for this. These will lock your gantry in place unless you have backers then you can't use these. I'm trying to get some sort of locker made for people that have backers that could use this because they have a spot right here that's blocked and you can't lock these in place because they go to this top here and then the, the top of your extrusion and you twist it and lock it in place. And it'll keep it from falling once you start loosening everything. So to show you how these go on, you're gonna slide it in here like this and it's gonna lock into your, the top of your extrusion here. Now, you see on mine, I have these lights that I just installed on this machine. Actually, there's a video for that if you wanna check that out. I'm gonna put this right here and then twist and lock it in place. So if you need to come up a little bit, just pull up on it and then twist it and it's locked. Now it won't move. Now we're gonna do that to all four corners. All right, we're all locked in. Now what we need to do is loosen the belts. You can only have to do the top side. You could do the bottom, but it's just more to take off. So we're gonna do the tops right here. Now we got all of our belts loose, we're gonna slide these belts out on all four sides. And when you're doing this, if you can, leave them hanging down like this, don't push them all the way back through your front idlers or your A drives, that way you don't have to reroute them. Now at this point we can go through and take off our idlers. We're just gonna go through and loosen the, the bolts here on all four of these. Okay, so we got our idlers here and they're looking angry as usual. So we just need to get the pulley out of, out of these to put in our new ones here. So we're gonna loosen the screw right here on all four of them and take these pulleys out. We 
We no longer need these. So I wanted to show you this graphic real quick. This is from Chaotic Labs. If you have a 14 millimeter pulley or a 13 millimeter pulley, this kind of shows you what you need to do. Let's go into detail with this and I'll show you what size mine is and how to measure this. Now we have our pulleys and our new idlers to install. So if you remember, I showed you the bag that's got the washers in them. Now you're going to want to measure this to see what the size is. If you have a 14 millimeter pulley, then you won't need to do what I'm about to do. But mine are 13. So when we put these on, we're going to put a spacer on each side. Only because when I measured this out, it was 13 millimeters. If yours says 14, then you don't need to do that. You're just getting the gap closed there so it doesn't wobble around. Keeping it centered. So loosen this here. Once you have that off, grab two of the spacers that come with the kit. So you're going to want to put one of them on right away. Hold it right there. Slide this in. Now you got to get your other one right up underneath there. I don't know if there's an actual great way to do this or not, but what I typically do, we'll take an X-Acto knife or something. I'll place the washer or spacer right here. I gotta hold it up this way and then I'll use something to slide it in place a little bit then push the bolt up the rest of the way. Just like that. Now it's in there. The washer's in there and the bolt is right around it. So now I can tighten it up. Our pulley's on. It doesn't wobble back and forth crazy. You might want to check your pulleys when you take them off, by the way, and make sure they're still good. But just tighten that up. It doesn't have to be crazy tight. And then do the same thing to all four. So I noticed this when putting it together, and it'll help you guys a lot. Since the bolt is kind of close to one edge, if when you're putting this on, if you have to put the washers on like me, the, the spacers, hold it close to that one edge, and it, it'll make that top one a lot easier to get on. You can almost just get it on without even using any special tool or using your X-Acto or anything like that. Had a couple extra spacers left over there. Now we can go ahead and put the machine up here and get these installed. So when installing these back on, just remember these two are the same and these two are the same and this goes in the, in the extrusion because it can really only go on one way, but I'm going to show you how they go back on. We can use the same bolts that came off, which was M5 by 30s. Just go right in there. Also, another thing you will notice that the spacing on the holes is different on an upgrade. Look at these right here. When we go to adjust this, you can slide it out just a little bit and you can slide these in place to where they're just about where you want them to be. And then we can slide it on. So I do like to install them out this way just a little bit. And then once you get it just slightly tightened, you can slide it back in place and lock it in and tighten it up. Once you get it slightly tightened there where you can move it around, slide it in place and we'll tighten it up. So before you go to put the belts on, loosen these out, but don't loosen them out so far that they're just hanging out and wobbling. I would loosen them out to where, right to where it starts to hang out and then bring it back in just a little bit so the entire block is covered. Now that we're done mounting all of them on, we can take this belt since we left it hanging through here. We don't have to do any crazy rerouting. We can just bring it right back through and down. Now you'll see this a lot where it bends this way. Sometimes if you just take and bend it the opposite way a little bit and kind of bend it around, it'll help you get that routed back through there. I usually just do that and kind of squeeze. So it just gives me a minute of kind of the opposite direction. Just enough to get it through there. Now we can put our clamp back on up here. Now this clamp is a little bit different because this was from Cleese Beefy Idlers. But your typical clamps will be like the ones on the back on the A and B drives, which I'll show you in a moment. But this goes through and then back up. If you was to have these idlers, that is. Put our bolts back in here and we can tighten them up. And we're going to do this to all four sides, just like the rest of this entire process. These have the standard Voron type belt on them. 
And I didn't have much slack, so I gotta be careful. I do want to make a note here while I'm fiddling with this. Don't be like me and leave yourself some extra belt slack. You can come up here and you can put a zip tie to this part of the belt since it doesn't move and you can just tie it there and you'll be fine. And you have extra slack so if you ever have to take it apart, you're good. I'm not going to go over the belt tension a lot in this video because I'm getting ready to release a video on belt tensioning. So I'll do the basics on this, which you can print something like this. This is an easy printable print in place part and you can check your belt tension, put a mark on it and just get it the same for every one. Or you can go fancy, print one of these right here and this is on west3d.com and you can print the parts for this. So before I go to tension these belts, the main thing you want to do and I'll say it one more time is to make sure all of them are the same. If you have this one really tight and this one a little bit loose, then that will cause you problems. But if you're, all of your belts are a little bit tight or all of them a little bit loose, you're not going to have as much problems. So you do want them to be the right tension. And again, I'll be doing a video on that soon. But what you also want to do before you do this, let's unlock our gantry. Take all these off. So tighten them all up just a little bit and then just move them up and down to get your belts all in line and things like that, it's going to help your tension be proper. Push it all the way down and then bring it back up. So you kind of want to go with the same 150 millimeter method with these. So get yourself 150 millimeters from the top pulley there to the, the bottom. So you're going to want to come up a little bit about right there in that range. We'll use this one to show you how this one gets used. This is what we're looking at. And for our Z belt, I want to get them around 2.6. Or if this was the AB drives I'm tensioning, I would try to get it at about 1.9 or about 2. So I want to tension this until it gets me 2.6. That looks about right, right there. So we want that on all of them. Now this is another option to use something like this. The way this one works, you slide it between here, kind of the same method. Now I have a mark right here on these, right to where I want it at. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a mark in there. So that's about right where it would be. So if you was going to use this one and print this out, put, it, put the mark about right here, and then each one you will tighten until it gets to that point. So now I'm going to go through here and tension the rest of these belts and we'll be just about done. All of our belts should be tensioned the same. Should be moving up and down good. It looks great. Everything is lined up well. Just double check all that stuff and that'll do it. So give me a like and subscribe. I got some really good content coming out that you're going to want to see. I really like these. These are very solid and sturdy and that's kind of one of my favorite things about them. Also, besides the thumb adjusting of the tensioner, that's very nice. You don't have to get a tool for it. But I did break one of these a long time ago on my very first 2.4 build. I had it tightened too tight a little bit. This was a PIF part. Nothing was wrong with the part or anything. It was just I had too much tension on it. Live and learn, okay? So that won't happen with these. And if you want to get a little more performance out of your machine, these are the route to go for that. So check out Chaotic Labs for these tensioners right here. So I want to say thank you to Chaotic Labs for making this video possible. And all you guys, I've got another video coming out for the XY, so you're going to want to see that. And we'll see you on the next video.